What's going on YouTube? It's Mid40s Gamer here coming at you with some more Dark Souls 3 content. Today we're going to be taking a look at a beginner strategy for farming the proof of Concord capped offline in PvE fashion. This item is offered to the company Captain Yorshka and Anne Orlando to increase your rank in the Blades of the Dark Moon Covenant. So let's shake all the snow off our boots, tell the Firekeeper we see dead people, and get after it. Our story begins at the Anorlando Bonfire and consists of killing two silver knights on the main staircase. There are a few ways to do this, but we chose pulling one knight at a time with the bow and facing off with them one on one since their attacks are widely predictable. And in this particular situation, a threesome would be less than ideal. As enemy stats go, silver knights are weak to dark damage, frost damage, and thrust damage. So the weapon we went with is the Irithyll Rapier plus five which makes this strategy easier than cracking a walnut with a sledgehammer. This rapier is easily one of the best thrust weapons in the game and is received after killing the Outrider Knight in Lothra Castle. It is one of the only weapons in the game with an innate frost effect and it also receives C tier scaling from strength and dexterity, making it extremely viable for balanced builds and with frost buildup occurring at 55 points of frost per hit, it cuts through these silver enemies like a hot knife through butter. It is also important to note that this specialized sword is unique for defeating any enemy that chooses to hide behind a shield. Its shield splitter attack not only breaks through shields altogether, but delivers its staggering frost buildup as well. Of all of the Covenant items, the Proof of Concord Caps takes the longest to farm due to the large loot pool that Silver Knights have. As you can see from the game footage, they are capable of dropping every piece of the Silver Knight armor set, Titan Knight shards, large Titan Knight shards, and the Proof of Concord Capped, which is the rarest drop in the loot pool. Our main farming gear for this farming extravaganza is the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring, which adds plus 50 to item discovery and can be looted in Irithyll Dungeon, off a body in a cell where you find Secret of Katarina if you're following his questline. You don't have to complete this quest line to get the ring, however following the quest line will take you right to the location. And finally our favorite piece of farming equipment that eerily reminds us of Mimics from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition, the Symbol of Avarice, which adds a whopping plus 100 to item discovery and a 50% increase to all souls games. The only drawback being is that the Curse of the Branded, placed on this helmet, from a once ancient god drains 10 hit points per second from the wearer. So just make sure you take it off if you're getting sucked down a TikTok rabbit hole on your phone while farming. Before we share the rest of our rock solid strategy and all the other trinkets we're wearing for this farming rotation, if you're finding any of this information far more useful than knowing that Canada eats more macaroni and cheese than any other nation in the world, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new mid-40s gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering why there are more LEGO minifigures than there are people on Earth, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing. Now that our mid-video call to action is complete, which we hope is up to Think Media standards, we'll break down the rest of our gear and the simple method we're using to dispatch the as far as rings go, we're also wearing the Sunlight Princess Ring, which regenerates our health by two hit points per second, and takes some of the sting away from the hit point loss we feel from our gruesome helmet. The Sunlight Princess Ring can be found in Guinevere's bedchambers just after Aldrich's boss room right here in Anor, London. The next ring we threw on just to fight the healthy hit point drain we're experiencing is the Ring of the Evil Eye, which absorbs 30 hit points from each defeated enemy. This ring can be attained as a quest reward from Anri of Astoria in the Catacombs of Carthus. And finally, the ring that seems to make us vanish into thin air, the Carthus Milk Ring, which gives us plus three to dexterity and obscures us while rolling. This item can be found within the Catacombs of Carthus after the first encounter with the rolling skeletal ball. If you continue to follow the path, it will be on the right side, tucked away behind the basin. And finally, the last piece of gear worth mentioning is the shield we rarely take off our back, the Shield of Want, which not only provides us with a 20% increase to souls gained, but also provides us with an average block rating of 65 and has the second highest stability rating among standard shields, making it one of the best general use shields in the game. 
Since the Concord drop rate is abysmal and farming them is far more painful than sliding down a slide of razor blades and landing in a pool of alcohol, you can also utilize rusted coins which increase item discovery by 50 points for 65 seconds. These items can be found at various locations throughout the game and can also be purchased from unbreakable patches in Firelink Shrine for 200 souls each. If 50 points just doesn't do it for you, you can also use rusted gold coins which increase item discovery by 100 points for 60 seconds. These unique items can be found in various locations throughout the game. They can also be farmed as a rare drop from the white-robed handmaids in the profane capital just outside Yorm the Giant's boss room. If you happen to have the DLC, they can be purchased from the Shrine Handmaiden for 1800 souls each in Firelink Shrine after presenting her with the old woman's ashes. These ashes can be looted from the corpse of the pilgrim near the Dreg Heap bonfire. You can obtain these ashes by killing her yourself, or she'll die naturally after you complete the Ring City, and you can come back and loot them from her corpse. And finally, as far as night slaying strategies are concerned, as you can see from the game footage, the Silver Spear Knight will initiate combat with a far-reaching electrified spear thrust which allows us enough time to roll past him and position ourselves behind him for either a giant backstab or some freezing thrusts from our frosty rapier to finish him off. The sword and shield knight is no different and charges up his sword for a lightning attack combo that normally consists of two downward shots. The same tactic applies, roll past his first swing, circle around during his second swing, which puts you in perfect position for the backstab. After he's freshly backstabbed, just finish him off with a few final thrusts. If fighting these knights straight up isn't your thing or you keep getting stomped into the ground by this dynamic duo, you can kill these two menacing knights with a cheesy range strategy. This strategy consists of aggroing them with the bow and running back past the bonfire towards the spiral staircase. The silver knights are unable to pass the entrance bridge to the staircase, allowing you all the time in the world to plink them to death with magic arrows or bolts. Well folks, it looks like we're coming to the end of another Dark Souls 3 video, as we finally loot up our first proof of Concord kept from this run. We would like to personally thank you for watching this farming video, and we sincerely hope all the information that we've provided you with has helped you out. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so we can continue to entertain you with our content weekly. And if you aren't too busy wondering why a strawberry isn't considered an actual berry, but a banana is, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know what game you think we should cover next, and we'll do our best to respond to you. So until next time, just remember, crows can remember the faces of individual humans. They can also hold a grudge. And as always, good hunting.